Arrow, what's up, brother? Man, I'll tell you what. I think I just had a uh, one of those moments where what is it? What was the movie about? Volume Eleven, a Spinal Tap moment. Oh, Spinal Tap! <laughs> <laughs> it goes to eleven, baby. <laughs> Have you guys had Spinal Tap moments? Oh, you know what? Half of our band has not seen that movie, regrettably, and we just oh give, we give each other junk all the time. They're like, dude, we're going to go to a hotel room, not party one night, and just watch Spinal Tap on repeat until we're sick of it, because <laughs> we got to do it. it. It's so funny that that I, I've talked with some of the biggest names from Alice Cooper on, and we've talked about Spinal Tap moments, where, where just something just goes wrong and and listeners yeah. will never know that this is our third attempt at this <laughs> <laughs> the third time's the charm so so when we have deaf andrews i'm gonna say that i i was deaf i didn't hear anything from you at all <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect <laughs> so you have to act like that you you've not heard any of these questions okay <laughs> you got it man. okay I've, I've compared your song to train and because i've been yeah. with train i i played train i i think that you guys are on the brink of something that's really going to be extremely big and that that's my 44 years of radio broadcasting talking i'm not joking around with you it's not because i know you you have a song here that is going to go on and and you said something about going to spotify oh yeah yeah we're going to be releasing this one first off i appreciate the compliment i mean that's huge you know i love love trains music been a huge fan of theirs for years um and, you know, we're going to be putting that out on Spotify in about a week and a half, uh, two weeks, actually. So next Friday, uh, September 22nd, we'll be dropping the one that I sent you over today. Um, and, yeah, you know, training, uh, that's a good comparison. Um, I don't think it's ex who we draw, like, inspiration from, but it definitely, definitely has that vibe. You know what I mean? That fun, energetic, summer loving vibe um, that we were really going for on these um on this new song why why spotify because i'm a podcaster and i want to be sure. everywhere why not iHeartRadio? why why not uh itunes and things like this i mean what what is it about spotify that has your attention so the biggest it's really the market dictating that um okay a lot of a lot of our audience uses spotify now we also so we're also on apple music okay. youtube yep soundcloud um you know deezer like all these different uh, smaller websites it's just spotify just do dominates the market right now and it's just the nature of of how everything is um and i think a lot of a lot of booking uh will look at yes they will yes they we'll will look at the numbers mm -hmm. right and it's also tangible right like you you see radio you know, they, they show how many people listen to you. It's that tangible number that I think a lot of people gravitate towards. Um, and it's also just really, it's an easy platform to get onto. Like, I wish I could get onto, you know, 106.5, right, yeah, or 99. Yeah. If Spotify is a very low barrier to entry for us, and it's widely used, right, like so many other musicians, you know. You bring up a really good point in the way that I, I remember talking with different bands that they did not want to deal with radio because it's like, we say, why do I want to make radio look good when we already look good? And the thing yeah. is, is that with Spotify, you can go in there and get your true honest-to-God numbers. You can't get that from the Arbitron or Nielsen ratings. Right, right. It's tough too, and you know we can also just be as authentic and in control of our release and music uh, as we want. It's, and that, for that matter, so can the audience. You know, if they want to listen to our music, they're going to listen to our music, right? Yeah. They don't have to, you know, be at the whim of whatever radio DJ is out there, right? If they're clicking on it, they're clicking on it for a reason, right? And that's because they enjoy listening to music, so. Becoming that indie or the pop rock connection that you are, I mean, it's it's one of those connections with listeners. How do you know that you've made it? What what are you feeling inside your soul Ooh. when you go, oh God, this was it? Yeah, we, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't say we've like quote unquote made it, but there's been moments where recently we played the Music Farm down in Charleston with uh, two other great bands. One's called The Simplicity, another one's Faux Daniels. And I never thought that I would be playing a show at the music farm. And that was just such a cool moment of being on stage where I had to be like, man, am I really playing here right now? Like, this is this is wild. So whenever you get into those spaces for us um, that you always thought of as a teenager, that it would be like, oh, that'd be a cool place to play. And then you do it. Those are the moments for me right now. And I think for a lot of us as a band where it's like, oh, wow, this is just this is the coolest thing in the world. Right. And I'm glad to be in that space because everything is still 
very new, right, and happening very organically, right? And I hopefully will never get to a point where, um, or hopefully none of us get to a point where we just take it for granted and that every show that we do in that live sense brings us as much joy, you know, as doing it the first time as, you know, whenever the last time we do it is, you know? How important is the name of a band? Oh, <laughs> um, I would say uh, probably top top two things: the name and the music yeah, are pretty uh, yeah. are pretty important. Um, good question. What do you ask? Yeah, only only because as as a uh, uh, an author that's been published, I could not stand where Barnes and Noble put my book inside their store. And and so with with a with a band like Def Andrews, where do you fit on that shelf? Oh man, I mean we're. Uh, yeah. That's a good question. Time will tell, right? The yeah. audience will know, right? The audience is going to dictate that. Um, I, I would love to think at the, you know, dead center in front of everybody else, but <laughs> it, you know, that's, that's where I would love to be. And that's where I hope the audience places us, but I, I have no idea, honestly. Um, that's a good question though. Never been, never been asked that before. So that's you, a good one. You being from Charlotte, this is Avid brother country. Did, did it inspire oh, yeah. you? Avid brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're great. Their energy is awesome. Yeah. Um, I would say our lead singer, uh, Nick, he's a huge Aver Brothers fan. I wish he was on the uh, podcast with us right now, but loves the Aver Brothers. Um, I want to go out to one of their, uh, I think it's like a New Year's Eve show that they put on. That's just absolutely nuts. I got to make it out to one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we definitely have that kind of fun uh, energy about us that, that they bring. Um, le- definitely less folky but it's yeah. still cool to be in the same area as them, yeah, for but sure. Is, is there really a difference between your style and their style only in the way that you're still talking about everyday life? You're, you're still bringing in that personal experience. It just has kind of a different musical instrument. Yeah, no, that's, that is a great observation. Um, the content would be inter- interchangeable, for sure. I think what just the separation of like in musical instruments, like you said, is the one thing that you know, is, is just a little bit different, right? I mean, we got, we're doing a lot more, some synthesized stuff, a lot more, yeah. you know, crunchy, crunchy guitars going on, <laughs> a little bit more layering. And they've got some great stuff with the acoustic guitars and, you know, whatever folk instruments they're rocking on when they're recording, right? So, but yeah, it's a great call out. Making those videos, is it still really important to be on, on uh, you know, YouTube? Oh man! Or, or are we gonna go Instagram? Let's let's get YouTube versus yeah. Instagram. So t- two different methods of delivery. Okay. I think YouTube is great for that long format, um, music video style of delivery, um, and is a great place to put a really long format like art. And when I say long format, I'm talking like three and a half, four minutes. Yep. The TikTok and the Instagram is that like quick hit, you know, dopamine, serotonin bumping, uh, <laughs> you know, those little, those little hits, you know, that let you know you're still there. <laughs> right. Um, so, but yeah, I think creating good quality content that connects you with your fans, right. Creating a little uh, teaser video or a lyric video is always great to push out there and, you know, it just it builds it builds that connection a little bit more with the fans. So I don't think YouTube, Instagram, even TikTok is is going anywhere. So. Why Saturn? Why Saturn and that first collection of music? Oh, Saturday on Saturn. Yeah, but you, uh, yeah everybody's yeah. going to Mars right now, dude. Come on, great great, uh, great song. So <laughs> that that song uh, musically was orchestrated by uh, our drummer. Funny really? enough, yeah, Braden. Yeah, he's a he's kind of a jack of all trades, right? Um, we all pitched in Kingsley, myself, Ross and Nick, the phrase Saturday on Saturn, I thought of because at that time I was really in kind of a weird place. Right. And I was like, I I was constantly trying to escape my brain. You know what I mean? I felt kind of trapped by it. I just wanted to get out. And I was like, man, I would love to go anywhere. Like, I would just love to spend a weekend as far away from this planet as I could be. <laughs> and Saturn was the first thing that popped into my head. I was like, dude, what if I spent a Saturday on Saturday? And the alliteration was great. I loved it. And I was like, dude, let's freaking make a song about this. So, <laughs> when, when a song comes to you, I mean, my last book came to me at South Park Mall. And, and yeah. I, I was walking up there by the fountain. And all of a sudden, I went John Lennon. And I go, what the hell would John Lennon be in my heart? Does a song hit you the same way? Totally. Um, myself and, and Nick and Kingsley, really all members of the band when we're, when we're riding, right? Um, 
I'll give you an example. Calm collected off Saturday on Saturn. Uh, Kingsley and I sat down and we wrote that song together, uh, at least the majority of it, um, in about three days, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I think for all of us, when you latch on to an idea, it just hits you like a tidal wave. And you, you almost don't want to stop writing. You know what I mean? Like you, you have so much, it all just starts clicking together. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the chakras aligning, maybe, you know, Mercury's in retrograde and it's unlocking some sacred, you know, artistic ability. But when a song comes together inside of the soul, it's really nice to just be able to get that all out. And it doesn't mean it's perfect though, which I want to clarify. Like I've written lyrics before looking back, I'm like, Oh God, like how cheesy is it? But that's why we all have each other, mm-hmm. you know, uh, myself, Nick do a great job of balancing out like lyrical writing, you know, Nick, Nick will write some beautiful lyrics. Uh, and maybe one of them is not that great. Right. And I might come in with stuff that I think is awesome. And Nick's like, Hey, why don't you try and, you know, not write it like this and let's yep. give it a different spin. But at its core, you know, definitely when it, when it hits, it really flows and it's a beautiful process to be a part of. And, you know, rather it's a song I've written or rather a song it's Ross or Nick or Kingsley or Braden's put together. Um, we're all here to kind of support each other's vision for, for where a song can go, you know? So, so how much love and trust do you put in that engineer only because when I, my last one, they, he goes, no, no, I'm not liking that lyric and, and I'm not liking that harmony. I you need yeah. to trust me. Do you put yourself in that same position as well where you totally. have to, you've got to love that engineer. Totally. We, uh, we record with a guy down in Charleston named Matt Zutel, um, uh, our last, or excuse me, our next two singles, our last album included, uh, was all recorded down there. And we love the idea of collaborating with him. And, you know, if he's like, hey, let's try a mic for Nick's voice, right? Let's try a different mic for Nick's voice. So let's try a different effect here versus what we originally had going in. Um, we'll listen to it and majority of the time we're going to be on board with it. Right. Like we love that outside perspective. And I don't think anybody tries to gatekeep like the possibilities of the song. I'm sure you know who Rick Rubin is, right? He's got this like, absolutely. You know, like he talks about one of the biggest things getting in the way of uh, a great song is like an individual's vision, right? It's important to have a vision, right? But if you're ignoring the collaboration and the ideas to flow into that vision, then you're going to miss out on, on some really great opportunities for what could be, you know. You, you talk about Charleston. Come on now. A lot of people around the country don't realize we're talking about Hooting the Blowfish, Darius Rutger, Edwin oh, McCain. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my God. I mean, that that is the soul of so much of oh. the South. Yeah, yeah, those are just the hit. Those are the big the big guys that came out of that city. There's a ton of great like indie bands that live in Charleston. I mean, we just played with two. Uh, Faux Daniels, The Simplicity at the Music Farm uh, this past or two weekends ago. You've got guys like Stoplight Observation a little. I mean, just a great hub for indie music. Uh, some some great like country and pop music coming out of there as well. Um, yeah, it, it, people think of it more as like that old, you know, old South white picket fence and, and all that stuff. But there's just a beautiful music thing, uh, scene down there that's just thriving, vibrant, and, and welcoming for all types of musicians. So. Is there something in our soil here in the Carolinas? Because, I mean, you, you, you dig in and find out how many of these bands have been inspired by the by the bands and the songwriters. I mean, look at Arthur Smith. My God. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, that, <laughs> that man inspired country music. Yeah. It's, I don't know what it is. I mean, we've got some, uh, we've got some beautiful song, singer songwriters that live in the South and from the Carolinas. And, uh, you know, maybe there's something in the water that we just don't see. <laughs> Lake Norman. Just, we feel it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that Lake Norman water. It's good for the soul. <laughs> Bad for the brain, but good for the soul. <laughs> do, you, do you think being on that stage is magic? 100%. Yeah. 100%. I, I can't, for all of us in the band, we feel that. Um, we've played shows before where we've had a crowd that's not engaged, but when the crowd gives you that energy and gives you that love, there's nothing, it's almost like a drug. I mean, you, you feel it inside of your soul on stage and when they're with you, you're with them. It just, it's that positive feedback that keeps going back and forth. And that's how you truly have those wonderful moments when you're playing live. Yeah. But you know, the, the sound I don't like is when the final song is over and you're putting the equipment away. Oh Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that sucks. You know, it's always an awkward transition because 
the thing that we try to do if we if we're playing last right and hopefully you know the audience likes us enough to give us an encore right yeah uh, what i like to do in those moments is i have this little pedal on my board and i'll hit it and it's a freeze pedal and it gives a it gives a little bit of an ambient noise <laughs> that's kind of still there and uh it, it prevents the clanking and the clattering of all the stuff that right. way the audience is, isn't totally checked out but yeah that last moment when you play your final note it just goes eerily quiet, you know, and you, you feel like you want to play more, but it's, you know, closing time, right? So you got to go. What do you, what do you do in those moments where people come up and say, do you need some help putting some stuff away? And it, because you know, darn good and well, if you don't put your toys away exactly the way they need to, they may not be there the next time. <laughs> I say, and I always, I'm like, Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'll grab a beer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because everybody <laughs> thinks they can help you. It's like, no, no, just stay away. I, I got this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've seen too many falling guitar cases and too many oh. collapsed pedal boards to to even want to go down that road. And I always appreciate it. It's just, you know, that's my livelihood inside of a box. And I, uh, I, I if I'm going to screw something up, I'd rather be the one to do it rather than watch somebody else do it. So. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's talk about the tour. Where are you going? I, I've heard Washington and New York City. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, we're, we're talking about the big, 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 big. This isn't Charleston. Right. Yeah, no, we're hitting uh, Washington D.C. Um, we're going down to Atlanta, Athens. God, um, Athens. You know, oh, jeez. Yeah. Athens, Georgia. Oh yep. my and, God. Um, yeah, we're gonna hit uh, New York City as well. Uh, playing in Lower Manhattan, which would be great. Um, a place called Arlene's Grocery. I thought it was like when they gave me that name. I thought it was a grocery store. It's, Arlene's Grocery is a great music venue out there, in uh, in Lower Manhattan. But yeah, we'll. Uh, We'll be going all over the East Coast. Um, still trying to add a few more dates on there as well. So we'll be uh, we'll be hitting it hard though over the next two months. You, you, you know we have live music at Harris Teeter on Thursday nights. Why the hell haven't you been on our stage? It's <laughs> <laughs> a great question. I feel like our, our uh, genre of music might uh, might blow out the customers a little too hard. But, we I need mean, you to sell some beer, dude. Okay. <laughs> there we go, man. I, I would love to. I would love to. All right. What's the website? Where can people find out about what's going on? On and buy merchandise yeah uh defandrews.com we've got all of our social media links on there merchandise links you can also follow us on spotify apple music pretty much anywhere you stream music will be there def andrews again um and yeah that'll be our uh may be our main sources of contact for everyone all right the girl i've seen you with recently when you get married can i be the dj absolutely because <laughs> you know we were the dj at an avid brothers performance Oh, that is too cool, man. Oh, that my God. Awesome. And when I talked to them about that, they, they totally, totally remembered every bit of it, how they would take a break and the DJ would come on. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> so you've met the Avery Brothers. Then. Yes, I have. Cool yeah, I have. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. How, and just a quick question. How are they as people? They are real. They are Charlotte. You know how it is. I mean, you yep. know, it's it's one of those. There's, the Charlotte entertainers are all about. They understand the connection and the community. And and that's the, that's that's the greatest thing about this area of the world is that they're just so real. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Oh, my God. Hey, thanks for your patience on going through this crap that we did. <laughs> I've never done three oh. interviews, and I hope to God none of the questions were ever the same. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. I mean, I, even if they were the same, man, I could do that. I love talking with you. I love talking with people in general. So I'm, I'm great, man. <laughs> we got to do it again, okay? Yeah, for sure. All right, man. I'll we, check you later, CT. You be brilliant, okay? Thanks, man. You too. All right, bye, guy.